Hi, I'm Vaz. Welcome to my story. Twenty-three times during my life I've lost fifty or more pounds. All it took was for me to realize that foods like this are what should fuel your life. Yesterday, my dog came to me and said, something's different. So I looked around, and to my chagrin, a peregrine falcon was sitting on my bush outside trying to eat the birds on my bird feeder. I ran to get the camera. I didn't think it was any way possible that bird wasn't going to leave before I got back. He not only waited, as soon as I started filming him, he turned around and looked at me. I've been developing a recipe recently for non-dairy dessert. I probably mentioned I used to love ice cream. And this has an ice cream consistency, only it's made with bananas and cocoa. I'm going to use some coconut sugar in it, but you could use stevia or any other non-calorie sweetener to lower the calories even more. It's a fairly simple recipe. You just take a, one banana, take the skin off it. Then we're going to chop the banana up. I'm chopping this banana up because it's going to get frozen and then it's going to go in the food processor after it's frozen. And it just makes it easier and quicker to go through that part of the process. Again, all, all that's going to be in this recipe is one banana, one spoonful of cocoa powder, one spoonful of coconut sugar, and some water. Then they just all go in this bag together, this Ziploc bag. I usually buy a six or seven bananas and I chop them all up at the same time. I've already frozen some of this so I could show you the end result, but I saved the last banana so I could show you how simple it is to make this. I had some the other day, it tasted so awesome I couldn't believe it. I guess ice cream's not back in my life, but this non-dairy dessert, as you want to call it, which tastes just like banana chocolate ice cream when it's done, is back in my life because I love it and it's low calorie and it's no fat. If you use a teaspoon, a tablespoon of sugar, then it's about 150 calories. If you don't, then it's only around 100 calories. That's it. One spoon of that, one spoon of this, a little bit of water. It's good to use a good Ziploc bag because you don't want the contents leaking out. Like I said, this is going to now get mixed up just like this. Just becomes a chocolate gooey bunch of bananas. You stick them in the freezer. And when you want to make a dessert, this is a single serving. You could obviously make this as big as you want, but I make single servings now because when I want some ice cream, I just take one bag out of the freezer, throw it in my food processor, and mash it all up. I might add a little more water when I'm mixing it, depending how it comes out. The consistency basically comes like ice cream because it's frozen. So it's a dessert you need to eat within the first 10 minutes of making it. Otherwise, it's going to melt and not be as good. Right now, I'm just going to put this in the freezer. And when it gets frozen, I'll take it out and I'll show you how we put it in the food processor and make it into ice cream. Okay, here's the consistency of the frozen banana ice cream. 
I'm just going to break this up now. Break this up into manageable pieces and put them inside my food processor. See, it's just a small food processor. If you got a really big dollar food processor, this will come out perfect. It comes out great in this little thing, so I can only imagine how it would come out in a high-end food processor. Like I said, this will make one serving now. One serving of non-dairy dessert. But let me tell you, it tastes exactly like banana chocolate ice cream. Let me rinse my hands off. Grind this up with the food processor. Okay, I'll show you the consistency now before I add any more water to it. You can definitely tell it's chocolates and banana. The only other ingredient in there is water. Now I'll pour some of this water in there, not too much. I might need to get a little more, I'll see. It's coming together. Stop once and make sure you don't have to take a spoon down the sides. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to get a little more water, that's all. Okay, I'll just put a little more splash of water. There it goes. You can see it now. It's smoothing right up. It'll slow the motor down almost. It'll get so thick. Okay, and there you have it chocolate banana non-dairy dessert tastes exactly like ice cream and there it is so here's a little experiment to show why fiber is important in our diets this water here represents our intestines this melted butter represents the cholesterol that runs through our veins so we just put some of that in here. Now normally, I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't mix too good with our vein, with the liquid that's inside our veins, our blood. That's actually what the water represents. So I'll mix it up just a smidge with the water. The water was a little cold, so it's not mixing up too good. This is flax which represents the fiber, which is a very good source of fiber. I pour the flax in. What that does is it'll bind with these fats and other solids in your veins that you don't want to go into your bloodstream. And then when you eliminate, it just comes out the other end. It can't be absorbed into your body. That's why fiber is heart friendly, because fiber helps to bind with the cholesterol in our blood and actually flush it from our system. And how would you flush it from your system? Well, that's when you go to the bathroom. There's no nice way to say that, but that's how it happens. Mostly when you poop, actually. I saw this experiment on Dr. Oz. Maybe it worked a lot better from him for him, but you'll get the idea. What happens is the fiber binds with the, with the cholesterol in your blood and pretty much keeps your blood clean, prevents cholesterol from clogging the arteries that feed our heart and send blood to our brain, and then it all just comes out the other end just like that, nice and clean. Okay, well today we're talking about fiber, why fiber is important in our diet. I kind of touched on the point with our little experiment 
and fiber will help to keep your intestines healthy and fiber will help to keep your veins that flow to your heart and up here to your brain and to your lungs it keeps all those veins free of cholesterol clogging fat you don't need to cut all fat out of your diet if you eat fiber it binds with the fat molecules and it flushes it right out of your system so let's go over a few sources of fiber in the basically vegetarian diet you could still be eating meat like I said for the first year I continue to consume even red meat I've now eliminated that a hundred percent from my diet but it took even me a whole year to get rid of the normal American mentality of eating cheeseburgers and having steak with my potatoes or even having meatloaf. I don't eat any of that anymore. I have mostly a vegetarian based lifestyle now. However, I do still eat tuna fish, fish, things along those lines. Chicken I'll still consume. So I'm not completely meat free. I do eat eggs most of the dairy's been eliminated from my diet anyway here's a bag of black beans all legumes are an excellent source of fiber and I'm just gonna read off the bag now because I don't have all this memorized but basically you have nine servings of beans in this bag at 170 calories a piece one serving gives you 12 grams of fiber what you want to do is get between 25 and 30 grams a day into your diet. The average American gets between 10 and 15, so basically they get less than a third to one half of the fiber that's recommended that they eat. If you ate the recommended amount of fiber every day, heart disease would be less rampant, and that's what this is all about. Here I have white beans white beans again 150 calories a serving there's 10 servings of those in this bag that's going to give you 11 grams of dietary fiber here's one of my favorite foods this is split peas but I love sweet green peas another low calorie source that offers you 12 grams of fiber per serving the reason I love split peas if you look on your nutrition facts every one of the things listed has something for vitamin C a serving has vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron, dietary fiber, protein and it's low in calories one of the best sources of multiple vitamins and minerals on here I have a hundred percent whole wheat pasta each serving of this 200 calories so a little higher in calories but it does deliver five grams of fiber all these things add up. You know I love to eat oatmeal for breakfast every day. Each serving of this oatmeal, a half a cup of oatmeal, has four grams of dietary fiber. What I do now is I use no sweetener whatsoever in my oatmeal. I put a half cup of oatmeal, a half cup of applesauce, which I now make from scratch and I leave the seeds, the cores, the peels, everything on the apple except the stems. When I do it that way, each half cup serving of applesauce gives me four grams of fiber. So by combining my oatmeal, my applesauce, and I also put a tablespoon of peanut butter in it, the peanut butter I choose to eat is unsweetened, unsalted. It's basically just crushed up roasted peanuts another three grams of dietary fiber so now for breakfast every morning I get 11 grams of fiber in one bowl of oatmeal a third to a half of what I need for the whole day keeps me full like I said often to lunchtime and I don't get a lot of hunger cravings so what we're aiming for is to get 25 to 30 grams of protein in our diet uh, fiber dietary fiber in our diet Excuse me. Again, you know, Vaz is not a doctor, I'm not a licensed dietitian, but I often research on the internet. I came across the University of California San Francisco website this week that has many two hour videos relating to our diet and other topics. 
The one I watched this week was based on fiber, and that's why I got motivated to put that in this week's show. One of the things that really caught my eye was the top 10 sources of calories in the average American diet, and what is it? Well, number one, grain-based desserts. So that would be cakes, pies, breads, things along those lines made with white flour, and pretty much they give you zero grams of fiber. That's the number one source of calories in the American diet cupcakes, things along those lines. Number two, yeast bread made with white flour. Again, virtually no grams of dietary fiber. Third was chicken and mixed chicken dishes. Obviously, if the chicken dish is mixed with vegetables, you're going to get some fiber out of it, but it's also a very low source of fiber. Here's a shocking one. The number four source of calories in the American diet is soda, energy drinks, and sports drinks. Once again, zero fiber. Number five, may or may not contain some dietary fiber depending what toppings you use on it or if it's whole wheat. Pizza is number five. Number six, certainly no fiber in these. Number six, source of calories in the American diet, alcohol. Number seven, Pasta and pasta dishes. Now, most of these pasta dishes are made with white seminola, which contains virtually zero grams of fiber. Like I showed you here, I pretty much use whole durum wheat flour. It has to say that on the bag of pasta. If it's 100% whole wheat, one serving you're getting five grams of dietary fiber and I'll often eat double the amount that they say is the serving size so I probably get 10 so that's a third again of my dietary fiber in my dinner meal but I also often add broccoli or other vegetables to my pasta dishes which add fiber to the mix fiber is important but the average American diet gets again 10 to 15 grams a day you don't want to just jump up to 30 plus grams of fiber in your diet because some people can't process all forms of the fiber and you may get gas or you could get bloating in your stomach, you could get intestinal discomfort. So you don't want to add more than two or three grams at a time till you get up to that 30 gram level. That's what I learned from that University of California study and it was a doctor having a whole class on it and I watched it for hours. I also want to point out they're the ones that told me only add a few grams per day to avoid gas, bloating, etc. Again they point out drink water six to eight glasses per day. How do you know if why was that come up with? Even they had no idea where the source, no one does, knows where the source of drink eight glasses a day of water comes from. There's no scientific study based on that. They don't even know who created that. But it is important to drink water, but you also get water from other things you eat, like fruits and vegetables. They all have water inside of them. So drink as much water as you can to stay hydrated. Well, Vaz, how do I know when I'm hydrated? I'm not trying to gross anyone out, but the way you can tell if you're hydrated is this. If your urine smells or is very dark in color, then you are dehydrated, my friend, and you need to consume more fluid during the day. So you're looking for clear, non-scented urine, and then you know you're hydrated. In the summertime, even Vaz drinks much more water when it's hot outside, and I've had days in the summer when I pee, and you can't even see it, it's so clear. Even now, it's colder out, and it's not easy for me to just guzzle water all the time. I am not motivated by being hot or anything like that, and I may be slightly dehydrated myself most days, but it still has almost no color to it, so that's how you monitor that. They also pointed out you should eat your fruit, not drink it. Are they against juicing? 
Not completely, but here's the theory behind for them to say that you should eat your fruit, not drink it. When you juice, you crush up so much fruit and vegetables that you're consuming way more calories than you really need, and it's easier to just juice 10 oranges and guzzle that right down. But are you going to eat 10 oranges? Most days you're probably not going to. So that's more of a calorie standpoint than anything else because you still, like I said on one of my other episodes, calories do make a difference in gaining or losing weight and you don't want to eat too many calories during the day. I myself sometimes juice some fruits and vegetables. I just try to keep it limited and I add some water to my juice so that it's not just all straight fruit and vegetables adding up the calories, especially fruit. Each banana, apple, orange, they're all around 100 calories each. So you juice 10 oranges, you got 1,000 calories in that one glass of juice. That's at least half your daily intake. So it just adds up to be too much. You want to make at least half your grain intake whole grains. I've said that in the past. If you do that, you'll still not even notice a difference in the flavors of your foods or your baked goods. And it will be enough for you through the course of the day to get the 30 grams of fiber that's required into your diet. Today I'm going to cut up these apples and make some applesauce from scratch. I'm going to start by quartering these apples. take the little ends off. You don't even have to take the seeds out, but I like to. Then I just throw them right in the pot. Okay, well you get the idea on quartering the apples. I don't know if you noticed, but I had a lemon over here. I use lemon in the applesauce, just a little bit of lemon juice to bring out more of the flavor in the apples. And sometimes I'll use cinnamon too, but in this recipe I'm going to use a lot of this applesauce for cooking, so I'm not going to add cinnamon, just in case the recipe I use later doesn't call for cinnamon in it. So I'm going to show you what I do with this, a little trick I do with lemons to get the most juice. Come over here to my microwave. And I'll just put this in the microwave for 15 seconds. I learned this little trick from an another TV show I was watching put on by children and I've been using it ever since. It seems to work good. Just 15 seconds. Once it comes out, I just cut it in half and I'll squeeze about half the lemon juice into the pan. That's it. Now I just take the lemon out. Let's bring it back over here. Okay, this will also this will also stop the apples from browning before I get them cooking on the stove. What I, what I'll do once these apples are finished being cut up, I'll just squeeze a little lemon juice in it, and I'll put about a quarter cup of this water in just so the apples don't burn when they're heating up. And you just boil that down. I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. 
and I'll throw it in the food processor and it'll become applesauce. Fresh homemade applesauce. I know exactly what's in it. I could put whatever kind of apples I like the best in my applesauce. I got these on sale. You know me. I went to that day old rack and I got all these apples for I think it was a dollar seventy five. I got eight apples and I had one green apple left over so I don't normally put those in my sauce but I'm gonna put one in there today might give it a little zing I don't know we'll see I'll let you know how it comes out I like tartness so we'll see how that works out it's a little bigger apple so I'm cutting it into eighths instead of quarters like I said before it's up to you if you're gonna food process this you don't really have to take the seeds of the core out you could leave it in one of my famous name cookbooks recommends leaving it in unless you like lumpier uh, applesauce then they, re they recommend taking it out but in the end process when you go to mash up the applesauce in that case you just use a regular potato masher so you could make this at home too even without a food processor you could just mash up the end result with your potato masher until you got the desired consistency couple more apples you see it's almost a full pan of apples that'll cook down quite a bit I think it makes about I don't know eight or ten cups of applesauce though like I said then it's fresh you know exactly what apples are in it you can choose any flavor apples you like my girlfriend loves those honey apples so I use those a lot I make that for her I always put cinnamon in it then though she loves the cinnamon in it I might even put some sugar in hers but mine I'm gonna make unsweetened okay so now I've done that I'll just cut my lemon in half put some juice in there keep the seeds out of it you see quite a bit of juice comes out when you use that 15 second method it really juices it really well there we go I'm gonna use the other half of that lemon for something else and I'll just put a little bit of this water over it and that's it they go right on my stove on the burner on the stove and I'll cook those down like I said 15-20 minutes or so medium heat and I'll show you the end result once I get done with that wow these apples smell awesome I think they should be about done and they are so that was exactly 18 minutes I cooked them on top of the stove I don't know if you can see the consistency of them or not. There's still some lumps in there, but once these completely cool down, I'm going to put them in my food processor and there won't be any remnants of the skin or anything. It'll all get crushed up in the food processor. But believe me, these smell awesome. They taste awesome. And this applesauce you made yourself from scratch. You know exactly what's in it. It tastes just the way you like it and it's awesome to use in recipes it's just as good as what you buy in the store I hope you try this at home it's probably the simplest recipe I'm gonna show you and I hope you like that ice cream recipe I showed you this week as well because that tastes awesome and it's well worth trying that out with your bananas <laughs>